RS3 ability tier video, I figured it was a good time to release this as uh, Concentration Blast, Greater Concentration Blast just came out and we also got a brand new T95 staff. So yeah, and I'm also behind on this. <laughs> I meant to do this like a month ago, uh, been a little bit busy, but here we are, better late than never. You guys know how tier lists work. Uh, let's get this started. So, right out of the gate, we got Asphyxiate. Asphyxiate is also, you guys may notice, I brought A plus back. Uh, it was very hard to do the range tier list without it. Um, so I brought it back. Might be very helpful for some of the threshold abilities we have coming up. Asphyxiate is pretty solid damaging threshold. It's a pretty standard ability on most DPS rotations. Uh, it's a channel ability. It does pretty good damage. It's the equivalent to rapid fire from range. Um, Honestly, it's a pretty solid ability. It's uh, definitely one of the more popular ones. Definitely not broken. I wouldn't put it in S tier. It's definitely a little bit better than A tier though. So uh, for our first ability, Asphyxiate is going to be an A plus. <laughs> Combustion. Combustion is a bleed. Bleeds are very good for DPS. Um, and it has the walking effect, just like all the other bleeds. Again, pretty great ability. You want to be using this as often as you can. You can't use it on everything. You can't obviously walk every single thing in the game. Um, but it's a great ability if you can use it. Um, and definitely there's going to be uh, some support abilities coming up a little bit later that will actually help Combustion out. Um, like Bracken Ruin. Uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So going in A seems like a good spot for right now. Very solid ability. Good bleed. Not much to say about it. Uh, so next we have the first, uh, one of the first big boy abilities, uh, Corruption Blast. Now I think I'm going to put Corruption Blast up in S. Uh, first of all, it's an AoE ability. Uh, AoE abilities are great. They're great for Slayer, great for room clearing. Uh, Magic, especially, has some very good AoE spells. Uh, range does have <laughs> Greater Ricochet, which is... You know, it's own thing, but that's for single target damage. Um, range has uh, range has so many good AOE abilities, and Corruption Blast works exactly the same way as Corruption Shot, just for magic. Um, yeah, I think putting it in S tier seems like a good uh, a good spot. I don't. I think it's definitely better than a lot of the things I put in A. Um, and yeah. Uh, like my other tier lists, this can change as I'm building it. Maybe I'll move stuff around. Um, it's kind of just as I see things and kind of see what the list turns into. Um, but yeah, up in S tier, I love Corruption Blast. I don't think many people will argue with it being up there. It's a very essential Slayer PVM ability. You want to be using it pretty often. And even in bossing, it's really good. Just helps increase your DPS. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it up there. Uh, next... Uh, deep Impact. Uh, I do really like Deep Impact. Uh, this is the Threshold Stun. Um, so, Magic does have, you know, this buff Rack and Ruin that we do have to take into effect when it comes to stuns. Range doesn't have anything like that with, uh, with its basic, uh, basic ability that benefits from stuns. Magic also has access to a lot more stuns than range does because magic also has all of its spells um so but deep impact it still hits very hard uh and it's definitely it's a threshold definitely a popular item on your dps rotation very solid uh it's definitely like either a or a plus um hmm. you know it it is it does hit pretty hard. The stun is very nice. You know, stuns are always, stuns and mines are always very helpful, especially for range and magic, where you kind of want to stay away from things, especially with magic. If you want to capitalize on being good against melee opponents, you have to stay away from them. Uh, so I think for right now, I'm going to leave it an A+. Probably a good spot. It might drop down to A. We'll see how things go later on in the list. Um, so next... We have Detonate. Um, I really like Detonate. Um, I especially love, like, when I'm doing these tier lists, I gotta say, I, I really 
enjoy the um, the style specific abilities uh, like detonate or like snipe for range um, so detonate you guys know how detonate works very interesting you cast it upon a target you build it up and then it explodes for AoE damage it's really cool and it's really powerful especially in a uh, elite dungeons and slayer and in spots where you just need to get a bunch of things dead very quickly i think it's also very useful at telos if i remember correctly um in dealing with the golems so because of that not super broken definitely not s tier is it a plus i don't know if it's a plus and my reasoning for it not being an a plus is because it's only really effect it's not the most effective thing to use on single target damage um it's definitely more of like a like an aoe thing but it is very powerful in that role i think because it is a little bit more limited than asphyxiate and um deep impact i'm going to put it in a for right now um maybe it might move up to a plus if a gets a little crowded but it's a very good ability. I just think it's a little bit more limited than what A plus can do. Um, you're not using it as often as some of the things that would be going up in A plus, but still very fantastic ability, great AOE damage. Um, and firing off with another good AOE damage. Um, Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath, uh, great AOE ability. <laughs> like, man, magic has some very good AOE abilities and it kind of works like Tsunami, you know, it, it damages the three targets in front of you. And not only that, but Dragon's Breath has a lot of support. It's got the uh, the Dragon Rider amulet. Um, I believe there's uh, something else it benefits from, if I'm remembering this correctly. I'm looking this up. Um, but even that alone, like, it's got the AoE. It's got the benefit from having the Dragon Rider amulet. Um... Yeah, so the, with the Dragon Runner Amulet, the damage is increased by 10%, and the 10% of doing like a weaker version of Combust, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, I think I really want to put it in A+, because I really like Dragon's Breath. It's a it's a pretty solid ability, and I think it's pretty cool. Like It's, it's like Cleave, you know? But unlike Cleave, it's not restricted to two-handed. Um, hmm. This is interesting. Uh, <laughs> I think I want to put it in A+, plus for right now. It's got pretty good support. It's an AoE, very solid ability to just be using in a general ability rotation, DPS rotation. Um, it could be A. Maybe it wouldn't be as strong as some other things that I think would go in A+, plus, but I really like Dragon's Breath. I think it's a really cool ability, very helpful ability. I mean, magic is all about like doing AoE, uh, critical hit chance, doing weird stuff with spells. So I like Dragon's Breath. Being able to have that like clearing ability is very nice. Um, ah, now this one. So I was very hesitant to put this on because uh why i don't know if you guys uh <laughs> i don't know if you guys knew this or not but golden touch is a magic ability um for those of you who are uh, unaware the sigils have all been reworked into abilities so golden touch is even when it was a sigil it was one of the weaker sigils pretty much uh basically all it does is for 60 seconds after using it, it automatically alks everything under your loot beam value. Um, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it, if you want to use, if you're killing something that's like super trash, you're not picking up any mobs with your gold accumulator. Sure, it's very helpful. But one thing you need to remember is that making this one specifically requires vital sparks, which are expensive, very expensive. And honestly, the other two abilities that you create with vital spark are kind of more helpful 
in my opinion. Even I, I honestly argue that the corruption one is pretty helpful in ways that most people don't realize. Um, especially if you're like a lower level player going up against the Soul Devourer stuff. Being able to benefit from the attack buff without the attack, you know, increase that's being done to you is pretty nice. And I honestly would much rather have that than this one just from my investment of vital sparks that's me personally maybe some that you could just as easily say well you're only using that on soul devourers you're using you could technically use this everywhere but i don't see people going out of their way to make this thing it definitely both of them are behind relentless relentless is just really good and it's the first one you should absolutely go for other than that it's kind of you know whichever one you want i mean do you want the loot beam to use everywhere or do you want to you know, kill more soul devourers and use uh, the corruption one. For the purposes of this, I think I'm going to put it in C. It is not a terrible ability. It's no balance strike. But I think creating it is a pain and it's very expensive. And automatically alking everything for 60 seconds, it's not bad, but I kind of wish it did a little bit more than that um this is a little redundant because i already have this but personally i would like to see it do this in addition to function as a gold accumulator if you don't own one um and then maybe provide some small chance to do something better if it does uh, i think like just alking everything is uh is not like the best uh it's not the best i uh i don't know I'm, I'm double checking this now to make sure it's not doing anything extra because i don't even know that much about golden touch i don't even have it myself uh yeah no it, i don't believe it pulls everything to you if it had that ability like the like the gold accumulator did for that 60 seconds i think it'd be pretty good and i think maybe i'd put it up in b uh, but for right now i think it's gonna belong in c um so next we have horror um, so I mentioned this in my range video, and it's definitely more applicable here in the magic video. Um, but there are already a lot of good magic threshold abilities. Wild magic, deep impact, asphyxiation, uh, shadow tendrils, or smoke tendrils, sorry. Um... They're all pretty decent, and unless you're using this thing specifically to walk or something else is on cooldown and you have extra adrenaline, it's not really high on the priority for your DPS rotation. So because of that, I want to put it in B. Um, yeah, these uh, the stun abilities from the horrors, is they're not bad. It's just, I struggle to find like better spots to use them than other thresholds, unless I'm walking something or have extra adrenaline. Um, they're not bad. They're just ported over melee abilities into these classes, which kind of work, but they're not the most necessary thing to be able to walk your opponent. Um, it is good for putting some distance, but it's not hard to uh, gain distance between you and your opponent now that Surge is in the game. And trust me, we will, we will get to we will get to Mr. Surge here. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna stick it in B tier. It seems pretty fair. B B tier is a pretty good tier for it because B is where all the abilities that aren't terrible but just aren't really used that much or aren't really that good go. So that's a good spot for it. Uh, next, we have Concentration Blast. Um, hmm. You know, I really don't know where to put this thing. <sighs> um, I don't think I'd put it in B. B feels too low. Definitely not S. Def I don't think it would go in A+. Plus. I... Hmm. I don't know. I'll get to greater concentration blast, but it's not a bad ability. 
but the thing is, is you have to cancel it. Um, which, if you do, like, it's kind of like a little extra DPS, but it's a whole extra step, and I don't like that the extra step is there. I, I, I don't know. A lot of people don't have a problem with it. A lot of people are fine with just canceling it. My issue with the whole, same thing with Fury, like the whole cancel on the second hit thing, is, well, Fury's uh, mutated version fixes that issue uh, for it by turning it into just one hit. Um, but the thing with Concentration Blast is you still have to cancel it. And it's that extra step. It's like it's only worth using. Apparently, it's only worth doing if you, you know, cancel that second hit uh, or else you're losing out on DPS. So I think I'm going to put the normal Concentration Blast in B. Um, greater Concentration Blast just released a few days like literally a few days ago um and for those of you who don't know what it does it's honestly pretty underwhelming i i was kind of expecting more out of this to be honest but basically all it is is just a flat improvement on the ability um in fact i'll give you the exact uh, percentages here so the the normal ability is a uh, 48 to 246 percent total ability damage over 2.4 seconds and three hits Greater is 70% to 290% total damage over one over 1. 1.8 seconds in three hits. Um, I don't have a chart that breaks down, you know, the specifics and like how much of a DPS increase this is. It it definitely is a DPS increase, although it's it's not by much. Honestly, it's like a it's like a not even 50%, is it? I don't know. It's like a like a 25% upgrade in like and like a, a quarter of the time. It's like a 25% more damage and 25% less time, so like a 50% damage overall. Well no, that that doesn't really check out. But I think that's kind of what they were going for is basically just ink more damage in less time and equals more DPS. Um Okay, you know, it's uh, it's a little bit faster, but I guess I was expecting a little bit more. Like, even Flurry got, like, a pretty cool, like, change to how Flurry worked, where it, like, reduced the cooldown of Berserk. Now, I'm not saying just port over some of these abilities to new mutated abilities, but I was expecting something a little bit more... I was expecting something a little bit more than just a damage increase in shorter time. Um, so it's a little underwhelming for me, so personally I think I'm just going to put it in A. It's not bad, it's definitely an upgrade, probably not something you want to actively go for as soon as possible though. Um, I think if you want to go for a mutated ability, I think great, Greater Chain is probably way better. Uh, but yeah, I think that'll probably be fine. Lesser in B, Greater in A, that seems pretty fine. Alright, so next we have Impact, the basic stun for Magic. Uh, I kind of like Deep Impact and like all the other stuns in my other videos. I don't have much to say about it. Stunning and Binding is very helpful, especially for Magic. Um, you can't synergize with Rack and Ruin and rack because there isn't enough time on the stun to be able to use it but being able to stun and bind your opponent for pretty decent ability damage is pretty good so i think i'm just going to stick it up in a i don't think many people are going to complain about that um metamorphosis so metamorphosis i really like metamorphosis too like the, again I have a kind of a soft spot for the the unique abilities. Um, I will start off with my usual spiel. Yes, it's an ultimate. It is fighting for control of adrenaline with sunshine. Um, however, there are a few spots where actually metamorphosis is better to use in sunshine. And what I actually like about metamorphosis is it allows you 
to use a better ultimate in situations where Sunshine's one weakness just doesn't work, and that is uh, Metamorphosis actually, you know, you can move while you use Metamorphosis, and you have a damage buff. It's not as good as Sunshine's, but you can move. And there are some bosses where you do have to move pretty often, like Hard Mode Bandos actually comes to mind, um, where it's very hard to just like sit down, um, set up a Sunshine and just stay in like a general area because of the rock fall. So being able to metamorphosis so you can keep like an ability damage while you you know you have like a lot of adrenaline um, and able to move around and deal with boss mechanics is a pretty helpful thing to have when you can't sunshine your way through it. So because it has that little niche, honestly, I wanna put it in A+. It's not the most broken thing on the planet I think if more people were using it, it might be an S, but I really like Metamorphosis. I think it really shows that you can release like a proper ultimate that can be used in situations other than Sunshine, um, albeit not as often in general, but A plus is pretty fine for Metamorphosis. All right, next we have Omnipower. Um, I pretty much have the same thing to say about this as I did with Overpower and Deadshot. So much like Overpower, Omnipower is just one big ultimate hit and it serves as an entry level uh, ultimate ability for the game. Um, and because of that, it doesn't, it you know, it's not the most powerful Overpower thing on the block, but it does do its job very well. and you know, introduces people to this is what an ultimate ability should be capable of doing, something very big. Um, it's also an instantaneous ultimate, which is helpful at Zilliana when you have to finish her with a, uh, when you have to finish her with an ultimate. Um, it also benefits from ultimatums, so you can use it with less adrenaline if you run that perk, but nobody really runs that perk as much, so. I think because of what it is, and the nature of what it is, it can't really be higher than A. Should it be B? Uh, I think it probably, in all honesty, should be in B. I really want to put it in A, because I really like it, and I think it just does its job better, but it does get crept out very quickly, um, and there are other better ultimates to use it. Actually, the one good thing about that I do like about magic that I will add real quick is that all of magic's alts are really good even omni power so and there's only four of them but all four of them are really good unlike and the same cannot be said for ranged and melee which have some that just you know just aren't used or just there's no reason to use them like frenzy and unload um, so because Omni Power is, I guess, technically the weakest, I think it may, may be fine to just leave it in B. But I do like it. It's not bad for what it is. Alright, so next we have Shock. Um, now Shock is a basic, so you can use it more often than Horror. And it kind of does, it's in the same ballpark. It's really only useful for walking combustion. Um, and just a little bit extra damage. The ability damage from it is not too bad, but um, yeah, I have not much to say about shock. Uh, it can go in A, maybe it can even go in B. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think leaving it. It's more useful than horror, so I think it I think it can go in A. Um, yeah, that's probably fine. So moving on to chain, uh, chain is an essential AoE ability for magic, um, much like Ricochet. It's very helpful for PVM, it's very helpful for Slayer, it's very helpful for crowd control, AoE. Um, it's a pretty solid uh, pretty solid ability damage. It's just like Ricochet um, and magic. Like I said, magic already has a lot of very good AoE abilities, so of course they have an ability like Ricochet and you know, this thing, Corruption Shot, Dragon's Breath, you're going to be doing some serious basic AoE damage, and that's not even including Detonate uh, and Sunshine. 
uh, if stuff is blocking in the middle of the sunshine. But now we come to greater chain, and yeah, chain is S tier on its own. And if chain is S tier, well, hmm. On second thought, if greater chain didn't exist, I think I might put chain in S tier. But just because greater chain exists, I feel weird putting them in the same tier. So maybe I'll actually move chain to A plus because it is still fantabulous. But greater chain just kind of is an upgrade and probably should be higher than it. Um, now also both of these abilities do benefit from carabang and flanking. Um, I'm sorry, not flanking. Uh, flanking will we'll get to greater chain in a second here, but they do benefit from caramang, which is very nice. Um, so, greater chain, I, I'm, I'm pulling up the wiki page just to make sure I have all of its uh, information in front of me. Um, so, greater chain, what it does is the next ability on the primary target is also cast on the additional targets with a 50% damage reduction. Um, so basically it works kind of like Mega Kangaskhan from Pokemon, where it does, you do the greater chain, and the next ability, it casts the, the main ability on your target, and it casts the, the same ability on all the other targets that greater chain hit, but at 50% power. Um, and flanking apparently does work like normal, so it will work with, you know, your binds. Um, there's a lot of information on the wiki about like how this ability works and like all the different interactions with it. There's a ton. Um, for example, uh, Dragon's Breath, the combust chance from the Dragon Rider amulet has a chance to proc on everything that's hit by chain. So you can potentially do some wild things with chain. It just hasn't really gotten the attention that it has because, well, one thing, Greater Ricochet just kind of overshadows the hell out of Greater Chain um, in just how useful it is because, well, Greater Ricochet is just very strong. Um, so, and I implore you guys to actually go and check the, this wiki page out. I'm just like skimming through it right now and I don't want to you know, derail too much, but there is a whole list of interactions with this thing based on all the different abilities. It would take way too long for me to name all of them. Uh, the Dragon's Breath one was a pretty good example. But yeah, S tier, fantastic ability. Definitely the best mutated ability for Mad um, second best. We'll get to the best in a few minutes here. But yeah, S tier for Greater Chain. Next we have Smoke Tendrils. Uh, smoke Tendrils... Hmm. Smoke tendrils aren't terrible. Um, again, pulling this up as well. I don't use smoke tendrils too often. Um, hmm. I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's it's definitely not something you're using in the beginning. It's it's something you want to use kind of later on in your DPS rotation. I think B feels too low for it. Um, you can also cancel out of it, which is nice. Um, so you could like cancel out of it and go into like deep impact or something. Um, definitely not S, definitely not A+. I think A might be fine. It is kind of like a third seat ability um in like the big threshold ability chain uh like asphyxiate and wild magic are kind of the big boy thresholds and deep impact is really helpful if you have the support for it detonate is really helpful for the aoe shadow tendrils it does do like pretty good ability damage but it also damages you like there's a risk to it um so i think putting in a is probably fine the, the dps isn't bad it's just not as good as some of the other things, but it's definitely better than a few of the other abilities in terms of how useful. 
Sonic Wave. Um, Sonic Wave can go in A+. Uh, kind of capitalizes on the big thing of two-handed weapons. You know, two-handed weapons are supposed to be more accurate and deal more damage, but they're slower. Uh, not, not deal more damage. They're supposed to be more accurate, but they're slower. Um, this is kind of capitalizing on that. It's just increasing the accuracy of your next hit. So it's something good to use before you fire off like a tendrils or before you fire off like wild magic. Um, something powerful. Uh, so it is hit chance, right? I'm, I'm again, double, yep, it is hit chance. Um, for a split second, I thought it was critical hit chance. Uh, and it's an overall, I think it's 6% accuracy. All right. A plus for Sonic A plus for Sonic Wave it is. So next we have Rack. Um, ain't got much to say about Rack. Synergizes with Deep Impact. It's the basic magic ability. Recharges pretty quickly. Can go in A tier. Not much to really say about it. Not too broken, uh, but it's something you're going to be using pretty often throughout magic. Rack and Ruin. Um, for those of you who don't know what Rack and Ruin is, also this looks kind of funny. Um, Rack and Ruin is what Rack turns into after you gain 12 stacks of Blood Tithe, which is a new magic spell that was released for the Ancient Spellbook. Uh, basically, the Ancient Spellbook got four new spells recently. One of them is Blood Tithe. And what happens is every time I believe you cast Blood Tithe, um, you can gain a stack. And when you have 12 stacks, it turns Rack into Rack and Ruin. And this one, I actually do have some better information for you guys as opposed to uh, as opposed to Concentration Blast, where basically you're going to be doing a lot more damage to the target in base, to just base ability damage, and slightly more if they're stun and bound. Um, basically, it's like a 3.2 times multiplier for damage if they're not stun and bound. If they are stun and bound, it's only two times. So... It's very good to use just in general for rack. It just gives you like a stronger rack pretty much for up to 300% damage. That's pretty crazy. Um, hmm. I think uh, I think A plus is fine. I, th I kind of like that actually. Like uh, abilities upgrade tied to the spell is kind of the shtick they were going for with the new ability, with the new magic spells uh, is you know, they either provide very good, like, benefits on their own, or they synergize well with other abilities, like, uh, Tsunami and Surge. So, I think A-plus for Rack and Ruin is totally fine. It, it's different enough for me to give it its own, like, spot, because it is technically different than Rack. Um, if you want to be technical and say it's just, like, a temporary power-up, sure, but if you're camping blood tithe you're going to be using this thing pretty regularly so i think it deserves its own spot but let me know what you think in the comments below if you think it doesn't uh so next we go to the big bad honcho ability of them all sunshine fittingly at the top at s tier uh, this is your combo starter this is what you're starting your dps with it's nobody's going to complain with me putting sunshine in s tier the sunshine tier <laughs> um Sunshine, much like Death Swiftness, is, you know, you place them on the ground, you start doing increased damage for a length of time that can also be increased with Planted Feet. Um, it is so good for your DPS and so helpful and used pretty much everywhere that you can stand still. Um, I don't, again, I don't have much to say about it. Easy S tier ability. Um... You want to be using Sunshine as much as possible. And as soon as you complete the World Wakes, you absolutely want to be using this ability. Um, Surge is kind of a bladed dive situation too, where it's also S tier. And it's not only S tier because it's just very applicable in combat. And if you want to be technical, you know, magic combat, it's very helpful to get away from your opponent. It's every class uses Surge. And not only does every combat style use Surge, Skilling uses Surge. General tra Generally traversing the world uses Surge. Surge makes moving around in RuneScape. It, it, it completely changed 
moving around in RuneScape because now you can actually just move through areas very fast and not burning out your run energy. So, and I didn't include Double Surge um, because Double Surge is just Surge with two charges. I didn't really, didn't really feel like throwing that in there. It's just Surge again. Um, it's a direct upgrade, so it would be higher than it anyway. But Surge, absolutely S tier. You're using it not just in combat, but outside of combat for, tra for traveling around. Um, everyone knows that <laughs> everyone surges everywhere. It's just the main method of travel in the game if you're not teleporting with something else. Um, next we have Tsunami. Tsunami, I think going in A+, is pretty good. It's definitely better than a lot of the things that are in A. It's not super broken and provides a pretty good critical hit chance, and I think it does have synergy with the new um, with the new Ice spell. Uh, so, and it is very helpful. Like, the AoE is very helpful. The critical hit chance is very helpful. It's not super broken. I don't think it belongs in S. It, maybe some people could argue it belongs in S. Um, I think A plus is probably fine for it. It is a very good ability. It's very popular, and it does have its uses outside of Sunshine. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So Wild Magic, the last ability. I was thinking A plus originally, but then I thought about it. And honestly, this might be my big hot take for the video, but I actually think Wild Magic is S tier. And hear me out. Wild Magic is so consistent kind of I, I kind of thought about this like snapshot it's just so consistent uh, it's two just solid very powerful hits they can't they have a very wide you know range of damage but it's generally consistently powerful and i think you can use this threshold better than all the other thresholds in the game because it's just so easy to use and doesn't have any inherent drawbacks like all the other ones. Asphyxiate, channel ability, deep impact, it's only one hit, but it does stun. Smoke tendrils, you have to sacrifice health. Um, detonate, you have to charge it up. But wild magic, you can just fire that baby off whenever it's ready and it will never let you down. I think S tier is pretty fine. Um, so yeah, I think this is gonna complete my tier list and it's actually interesting, I didn't end up using D tier this time. <laughs> in fact, the lowest ability is not even considered really a magic ability. Um, so, yeah, I mean, magic has some pretty solid abilities. They're kind of like range. The, the abilities are pretty solid for magic. And the only ones that are in B tier that are questionable, Concentration Blast is just kind of a weird case because of the canceling the third hit. And horror and omni power are just not as powerful as everything else, like but slightly. Like they're not bad abilities. And then all the other abilities are just very solid. Um, and again, magic is a very balanced ultimate, uh, which I like to see. Even though sunshine does still rule the roost, it's at least not a situation like melee and range where there are some ultimates that'll just never, ever, ever, ever be used unless they get some ridiculous support behind them. So I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, what do you think? Would you change anything? Would you buff anything in B tier to make it better? Would you nerf anything in S tier to make it more balanced? Uh, definitely let me know. And I hope you guys all have a good day. Stay safe, and I'll catch you all in the next one.